There is a delicate balance going on between the fragile ecosystems where we live and the fossil fuels which we need. Unfortunately, this relationship can be at times a tenuous one. When accidents happen, a special team of biologists answer the call. With failing infrastructure for pipelines and with the increased activity, the number of spills that we see are increasing. Because of all the drilling going on in Texas, they say that we are probably just as big as the Iraq field in Texas right now. We are only going to get busier. They are the kills and spills team, and these first responders are needed now more than ever. Talco, Texas. An oil pipe has burst, and now the oil and sludge is choking a nearby creek. Okay. Our team. There you go. All right, I can do. Are the first feet on the ground, first eyes on the resources. We will go out and look for dead birds, oiled wildlife, and we also identify where the cleanup needs to begin. Yeah, it looks like there's pretty good bit of oil upstream and downstream. Meet Greg Conley. It's uh, shell is open with fresh meat in there. He is one of four regional biologists that coordinate response to these fish and wildlife kills across the state. There's another small mussel. This is the first time I've seen this number of mussels, freshwater mussels, in a stream such as this in East Texas. There we go. It's surprising. But they're dead. It's not an easy process to uh, repopulate a mussel population. Yeah, all this movement in the water, those are all juvenile, small fish that were once in this creek. There's probably 20 small fish in here hanging on. Ugh. Seeing fish struggle like that, it's, it makes me feel disappointed that, that these um, uh, particular fish won't make it. So in this investigation, all the resources we find, specifically the fish. Just over three inches. Just over three inches, okay. We um, total up the species, the size, and get a value. And that value is, is uh, put towards a restitution project to restore the habitat was lost or somewhere nearby. The responsible party will cover the cost of cleanup. As for that restitution, the values can vary. This crawfish will cost 10 cents. Yep. A little over two inches. And this sunfish? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to identify that to species. 37 cents. The impacts that are caused for fish and wildlife kills due to oil and pollution events is often not very high. And so there isn't an incentive for them, other than being good stewards of our resources, they're not going to pay a lot of money. Texas is the country's top crude oil producer, and the business brings in billions. As part of this business, accidents happen, like this one near Texas City. You need to get pictures first, right? Yep. Andy Turpak has word that several ducks are dead along this beach. In essence, we got oil on a beach where birds are coming through to, to rest, to feed as they continue their migration. So it's challenging right now. It looks like a scalp. It's pretty heavily oiled. I mean, you can see how there's hardly, can't even see feathers there. It's almost like it's been painted on like wax. They're looking for oiled birds, picking those birds up and getting them to a rehabilitation site to save those birds. Spills can wipe out many of the small fish and coastal invertebrates that live along the shoreline. If your food source goes away because of some sort of spill or, or pollution event, then you end up with animals that will die from starvation. So it's all interconnected. It's all about that you know, circle of life that we talk about. It's not just that we're going to try to save the birds. If we try to save the birds, that's, that's great, that's good. But we also need to be worried about impacts of the sand and the things that live in the sand the birds are feeding upon.
there's a natural killer that this team also focuses on. A toxic algal bloom that hits the Gulf Coast called red tide. What the cell counts do whenever our crew looks at those, it's more for are we anticipating a fish kill pretty quickly. We know that once it hits five, once it hits 100, and we start looking at that, we're going to have to get staff onto the ground. While it can cause respiratory problems for humans, red tide is lethal for fish. When we have our first fish kill, they're out assessing what kind of fish are killed, how many they're killed, where it's occurring, and trying to assess what that impact is along the coast. If it's a natural event like a red tide, we can't do anything to stop that. In an oil spill, we may not be able to stop the oil, but we can protect some of the resources. Back at that oiled creek in Talco, Adam and Greg take a few more notes for their investigation. Definite water moccasin. These fish can disappear in that oil. You see the rainbow sheen is always indicative of a crude type spill, petroleum related. It's really impacting the creek uh, the deer are going to have to go somewhere else to drink. The coons are going to have to go somewhere else to drink. What a mess. That's exactly what goes through my head. What a mess. But I know they can make it better. The compensation for spills can be as little as $100, like here at Talco, or it can be upwards of a million dollars. When we're done with an event, any kind of event, and we get compensation from a responsible party, we actually are able to do good things for the resources. And an example of that could be with oyster reef restoration that we've done. Looks real healthy. As well as marsh and wetland creation and restoration. Inland, that can be fish stocking and habitat creation in lakes for fish, as well as stream creation and restoration. As for this creek, the members of the Kills and Spills team are doing everything they can to help it heal. This is sock moon. It's absorbent. It floats on the surface and it absorbs the oil as it passes by. If cleanup is done well, um, give it time, these systems typically are pretty resilient and can recover well. Makes me feel really good. I can actually come out of here and what I feel is make an impact uh, for the better through what I do with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Kills and Spills team.